hope the start of the school year is going well and um, thank you for um, your patience with um, this training. We had to quickly switch um, to a new format instead of doing Zoom. Um, and I just wanted to let everyone know that I um, I can't see who's on the call. Um, so um, if you have any questions, we will save those uh, for the end of the presentation. Um, and if you if any questions do come up, uh, please enter them into the chat and then at the end um, we can go through them together. Um, and I also just wanted to um, remind everyone that um, this webinar is being recorded and it will be um, available on our web page. So let's get started. All right, so um, and if if uh, people wouldn't mind muting themselves when they join, that would be great um, right when you join in, because I know we'll have some people um, joining us um, in the next few minutes. So um, here's the agenda for the presentation. Um, so we are going to talk about the FFVP awards. Um, allocations and funding. Um, we'll also talk about some general program guidelines because we do have some new schools that have joined this year and new staff. So it's always good to review um, the nuts and bolts of the program. We'll talk about reimbursable costs, what you can use your money for, um, and then end with resources and tips. And for those who um, just joined, if you have any questions, please enter them into the chat and I will answer them at the end. Um, so congratulations for those who are on the call. Um, you're at this training because one or more of your schools were selected for the program this year. Um, so a total of 209 schools um, were awarded um, and out of that, total we um, awarded 15 new schools which is exciting um, as far as the um, amount that we received as a state um, we had over 2.9 million awarded to us from usda and um, those were distributed to schools um, and the program gives priority to schools with the highest free and reduced percent um, and in the past, we awarded at 50% free and reduced or above, um, but that threshold has kind of gone away um, with COVID um, because we're able to award well below that percent. Um, so for this current year, um, I was able to award schools that were 27.7% free and reduced and above. So well below that that 50% mark, um, and an awards list is posted on our FFVP webpage. So I'll show you what that looks like. Um, so when you get to our homepage, for those um, who are familiar with it, um, and I would encourage you to bookmark that page. Um, on the left hand side, you're going to see um, a navigation um, and programs as an option. So you're going to click on that. When you get to programs, you'll see all of our programs listed. So you'll go down to the fruit and veggie picture and click on fresh fruit and vegetable program. And then this will um, pop up and um, you'll see the final awards list posted and then the allocations for school year 2024. So as far as um, school selection criteria, um, in order to participate in FFVP, you do need to be in the National School Lunch Program, um, which is pretty self-explanatory. Um, and um, schools that participate um, have to be a combination of grades pre-K through 8, so no high schools are allowed or grades 9 through 12 um, because it's really um, 
targeting the the younger students. Um, and again, priority is given to schools with the highest free and reduced percent. This is a federal um, requirement that we need to follow. And so those are kind of the basic requirements um, to select schools. But other criteria that we look at as part of the awards process is late claims. Um, so if um, the, if a school district has three or more late claims, uh, we need a CAP stands for corrective action plan. Um, so you would need to submit a corrective action plan um, to me before um, I go ahead and approve um, the schools in your district. So we do look at late claims, and this is claims that are filed and approved by the 8th of the month. Um, I also look at fund usage. Um, so um, less than 25% usage by midpoint, so typically in February and March. Um, and then I also do a year-end um, usage review. And if if any schools have spent less than 50% of their funds, um, this is a factor that I look at when awarding for the following year um, to, to make sure that funds are in fact being used. Um, and then the last um, part of the criteria is um, if we have any concerns with another child nutrition program, such as during an administrative review, um, these are all factors that um, we look at with awarding schools. So just wanted everyone to be aware of that. Um, so let's talk about the funding structure. So um, FFVP is a little different. So it runs on a federal fiscal year, not a school year, which um, can pose some challenges. Um, so what this means is that the funding, so for school year 2024, the funding begins October 1st of this year, and it runs through September 30th of the following year, so across two school years. Um, so what needs to happen is funds would need to be saved at the end of the school year. Um, so you have some startup funds for September of the following school year. Um, so, um, this is, you know, something to be aware of with budgeting to make sure that funds are being saved, um, and to reach out if you are unsure of, of how much money you have left for September. So if you are a returning school, meaning that you participated in the program last school year, you're gonna use your leftover funds from school year 23. Um, you'll use those in September. Some have decided to use all their funds by the end of the school year and start on October 1st, and that's fine as well. Um, and the new allocation begins October 1st. Now, if you're a brand new school and you did not participate last year, um, you're gonna start program operations on October 1st, um, and you won't have any September funds available. Um, so what I recommend is really use September as a time to plan and think through um, and get people on board with the program, um, teachers, um, your own staff, et cetera. So the school year 2024 allocations, so the ones that start October 1st, those are posted on our website on the same um, FFVP page that I showed earlier. Um, and a little more about these allocations is um, they're based on a per student rate multiplied by enrollment. Um, and federal regulations um, tell us that 50 to $75 per student must be used. Um, this isn't, um, this doesn't change each year. Um, 
So typically in the past, I would award around $50, $55 per school or um, per student multiplied by school enrollment, and that's what your allocation would be. But this year I've increased it. Um, so I used $59 per student um, to account for the increased food cost um, because there were a lot of schools that spent over their allocation last year. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that um, people had um, enough to get through the year. Um, so hopefully you'll find that this increase in funds um, will work out better for this, this coming year. So there are some CMP web reports uh, for, your, for you to be aware of um, and to check throughout the year. Um, so we have the FFVP usage report. So we'll talk about that first. Um, so this is helpful to track your, as the name implies, the fund usage each month. Um, it also lists the allocations by school um, and it gives an updated balance for each school. Um, so what you would do in CMP web is you would go to the reports tab at the very top. Um, and then in the drop down, you'll see accounting reports and then FF, FFVP usage is under that. Um, the next one um, that we actually recently just turned on, so now um, sponsors can view it, um, is the FFVP monthly claim report. So this gives you a snapshot of each month's FFVP expenses that um, you reported on your claim or your site claim. Um, so it's a breakdown of each month's operating and administrative costs. Um, and I'll show you what each report looks like. Um, but for the monthly claim, what you'll do is you'll go to the reports tab, find claim reports, and then you'll see that um, listed under that section. So this is the usage report. Um, and I pulled from last school year um, because for this current year, if you were to go to the 2024 usage report, this PY rollover column is not working correctly. So I would disregard this column altogether when looking at the report. Um, but this is where you would go to check what your balance is for September of this current year. Um, so you would go to balance and then under October through September, this will tell you how much startup funds you have for the current year. Because you're taking the balance and then it's rolling into September. And I did include in the last Thursday update um, steps of how to um, find this report and, and find the balance. So I'll be putting that on the Thursday update again this week. And then this is the monthly claim report. Um, again, I, I pulled a district from last year because we don't have um, any in information really for this current year. So. Um, it breaks down your operational and your administrative costs, and then it includes the different categories, food, labor, other. Um, on the left-hand side, you have each month and then um, how much food was um, recorded from your site claim for each month. Um, so it can be helpful to look back and see you know, how much labor that you had um, reported for FFVP administrative labor. Um, so it can be helpful to look at. And you you don't have to go into each claim. It's, it's a report that um, you can use. All right, so now we're gonna move into general program guidelines. Um, so I wanted to include the goals of FFVP because we do have some new schools, but it's also helpful if you've been doing the program for a number of years um, uh, to just 
really, um, you know, think of the program in terms of what the goals are and how how you approach it. So um, the first one is expand the variety of produce that students consume. So exposing them to different different items um, is one of the goals. Um, increasing students' produce consumption and then making a difference in students' diets to impact their present and future health. Um, so really just keep these in mind when planning your programs and deciding um, what to what to offer for your for your FFVP days, I think is important. So this is how it works from a very basic um, level. So um, fresh fruits and vegetables are available during the school day to all enrolled students. So if you have a pre-K or a Head Start that is enrolled in your school, um, you can offer it to them um, and you would want to offer it to them. Um, the school can decide when, where, and how to implement the program um, as long as it's outside of breakfast and lunch times. Um, but there really is a lot of flexibility how you go about developing a plan and it's part of the annual FFVP application. Um, so if you want to check what um, what you had included last year, you can go back to that application. Actually, it would be your school year 2024 application. So you can check it, um, especially if you're um, a new new school or new food service director um, to see what was what was entered there. Um, and it's also um, it's a reimbursement program. Um, so what happens is as part of your monthly claiming process, um, when you're entering your breakfast and your lunch numbers um, on the site claim for each school, you're reporting your FFVP expenses on that claim. All right, um, so I'm going to forward and see if, just been made aware that you guys can't see my slides, so we'll see if maybe there's a, a delay. Okay, we're good. <laughs> so working through these challenges, just like, you know, everyone else. <laughs> so um, so here are some questions. So uh, what can I serve? So as the name implies, um, it is fresh product only. Um, so no canned, no frozen, no dried, no smoothies. So it has to be in its whole form. Um, you can offer dips with vegetables, but not with fruit. Um, because fruit is pretty acceptable by by students, um, but you can do a dip or peanut butter or something like that, um, sun butter, with vegetables. So in what form? So um, it can be prepackaged fruits or vegetables that can help with labor. Although I've I've been told that um, the quality isn't always great with these items. Um, but it's it's an option for you if you would like to um, do something something different like that. Um, Pre-cut produce, which is really helpful for younger students, um, and then whole fruits and, and veggies um, are allowed. Um, and I would I would just recommend to think think beyond apples, oranges, bananas. It's fine if you do that. Um, you know, like once a week or or something, but um, really look to expand the options as much as you can. So where can you source from? Um, so really, the sky is the limit. It really depends on your school and where you would like to purchase from. Um, so you can purchase from uh, your regular food distributors. 
Um, you can buy from local farms um, to incorporate more local produce. I would just um, advise that you can um, use both your FFVP funds and your federal and state local foods funds. You can't double dip, so um, you would have to choose uh, uh, to, to use your FFVP funds for local produce to get reimbursed for those purchases. Um, if you have a school garden, you could purchase from your, your garden. Um, if they um, have a process in place to sell to the cafeteria or it can be donated however it works um, and then grocery stores so if if you're a smaller school and you don't need cases of um you know a certain fruit or vegetable you could go to your your local grocery store and buy a smaller amount so these are all options that you have how about when and where to serve um, so outside of breakfast and lunch times, um, it can't be part of your breakfast fruit or your lunch fruit or vegetable. It's a completely separate program. Um, I would recommend if you, if you do a breakfast after the bell or a second chance breakfast, uh, to consider serving in the afternoon because you might get higher participation versus doing it mid morning. Um, and I know there are some schools that will do a combination of a of mid morning for some students that have a later lunch, and then they might do a, a mid afternoon snack for kids that have an earlier lunch. So you can do a combination of times. Um, as far as where to serve, so I've seen carts in the hallway. Um, this seems to work well for older grades. Um, delivering to the classroom, um, some students will come down to the cafeteria and grab a, a fruit and veggie bag and bring it back to their classroom. Um, they have a lot of fun with that and, um, you know, like like to help out. Um, I've also um, heard some people serve during a locker break or another break during the, the schedule. Um, and even after PE class is kind of a nice way to tie in physical activity and um, a healthy snack if if that works out in the schedule. Um, and the pictures I have up here, um, one is a, a cart at um, a middle school and then the student market um, is where we had a, a school per, use their FFVP money to purchase um, a refrigerator and the students um, have a certain time during the day that they come down and choose what fruit or vegetable they want and bring it back to the classroom. Um, so they call it the student market. So that's kind of another um, unique um, way to offer it. And we'll talk more about uh, using your funds to purchase equipment. As far as serving days go, um, so the minimum is two days per week, even though I would encourage more because um, you'll be able to use more of your money and um, it really becomes part of the student's day and they look forward to it. Um, it's part of their routine. Um, and the serving days really can be adjusted at any point during the school year. Um, so if on your application you would put two days, but you want to increase to three, that's absolutely fine. Um, and you can also increase the number of serving days if you find um, you're not able to use your funds. So there's no um, nothing you're really tied down to with serving days, except it does have to be two days per week, but it can be more. Some other serving reminders. Um, so again, fruits and vegetables or fruits cannot have accompanying fruit dips. Um, vegetables can have dips, but they do have to be portion controlled. So you can do like the little PC cups or packets. Um, you can do a cooked vegetable if you want. Um, it's not very common, but that is allowed one day per week. Um, and 
um, an education component does have to be a part of that. Um, and as far as portion size, because I do get some questions on this, um, there isn't any specific requirements for portion size. And so I recommend um, doing it based on the age of students, you know, whether it's a half cup or a quarter cup for the really younger kids. So that's really at your discretion. All right, so let's talk about equipment requests. Um, so if you would like to purchase equipment, you think it would be helpful in operating your program, you can complete the equipment request form on our website. So it's on this link right here. Um, it asks a few questions. It's not super involved. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like in the next slide. Um, but you're going to send that to me. And then I will review. And if there's any questions, um, I'll follow up with you um, before approving. Um, but usually it's a pretty quick process. Um, and it does, I do have to approve the large equipment purchases. As part of the request, um, it does ask what percent you plan on using an FFVP versus other child nutrition programs, so like lunch or breakfast. Um, and this is so the um, the FFVP cost is is minimum. Um, so, for example, if you would like to purchase like a small cooler to store your FFVP items, but you also plan on using it to store something else, um, you would have to prorate that cost. Um, as far as small wares and supplies, there aren't, there isn't an approval process needed for that. You can just um, record that as an other cost. So this is the equipment request form. Um, so there's instructions and about five, five questions. Um, and then at the bottom is a place for you to sign. And then I also um, sign when I approve the request. So it's pretty straightforward. So what about adults? Can they participate? Um, so the rule is that only teachers and or ed techs who are directly responsible for serving um, can participate. And this is so they're modeling the behavior. Um, they can encourage kids to try maybe something that's less familiar to them. Um, so I think it is really good to have a teacher participate um, with the kids um, and can you know, get them excited and it might be a little less intimidating. Um, teachers are strongly encouraged to include a nutrition education component if they if they are um, taking part in the FFVP. Um, and I'll talk about some examples of education, um, but it's important to keep in mind that it's not available to the general teacher population and other adults in the school. So as far as nutrition education goes, um, here are some ideas uh, to consider. So um, we are lucky in Maine that we have a lot of partner organizations that can help out with the education component. Um, so SNAP Ed, Cooperative Extension, um, which are both statewide, um, they they can help out with that. And then also Food Corps, um, which depending on where you're located, you might not have a Food Corps member, um, but if you do, they can also help out with this. Um, and I know that it can take time to coordinate this, but it's um, you know these organizations are willing to help out and it also takes the burden off of uh, teachers. Um, some other ideas are um, sending fun facts to classrooms or morning announcements. Um, I've been in a school um, where, you know, they choose a student to do the morning announcement and they, um, you know, share what the, the FFVP of the day is and it's really neat to involve them. Um, you can promote 
on school menus and your website. And then there's also uh, free re resources from Teen Nutrition. Um, they have, you know, different activities and books and it's all free that you can order or your teachers can. And then I just put a um, little reminder here that unfortunately you can't use your money to purchase education materials. So sticking to those low cost or no cost resources is would be best. Um, this is an example of a menu from RSU 23, so Old Orchard Beach area. Um, and I really like how this, you know, it's a it's a menu, but it also has some fun facts and it has some different things um, that I hadn't heard of before, like pink pineapple um, and the different um, colors of cauliflower. So it can um, it was a nice, nice variety um, and just something something to think about. As far as publicizing the FFVP, um, it does have to be publicized. Um, it is a question on our review forms if we do an administrative review um, in your district. Um, so here are some, some ways to go about doing that. Um, you could use your school or district website. Um, I've seen postings on like Facebook and Instagram. Um, email blast to parents and school staff, school board meetings. Um, I came across this flyer um, that's a, a one pager for for parents and it's pretty pretty simple. Um, it was from a few years ago, but it talks about you know just basics of the program, what the goals are, and um, I think it you know it's something that kids can put in their backpacks and bring home. Um, and um, I, I feel like whether you've been doing the program for a while or if you're new, not all families know about it because, you know, new new kids are constantly um, coming in each year. And um, and so it's helpful for for parents to be aware of. And then I also came across this banner um, that another I think it was. West Virginia or Kentucky, I can't make out the state, but um, they had, it looks like they created some banners and, and posted those in their um, school. So I thought that was neat. As far as monitoring goes, so there is an FFVP monitoring form. Um, the deadline is February 1st of each year. Um, and it's filed internally. So during an administrative review, um, we would just come in and look to make sure that it was completed. Um, so it's pretty much a self review form. Um, and I would recommend doing it before February 1st, just because if there are any issues, um, those can be addressed sooner than later. Um, but the the requirement is February 1st of each year. And it's a good opportunity to get out and see how it's how it's operating, um, how, you know, how it's going for staff and for the other um, teachers, just to make sure everyone's on board. So we're going to switch gears and talk about reimbursable costs. So this is what you can use your funds for. So funds are um, broken out into operational and administrative costs. So your operational um, would include fruits and vegetables, and the majority of the money should go towards your fruits and vegetables. But you can also um, get reimbursed for labor to prep, labor to serve and clean up, and supplies. Um, so September is also a good year to kind of stock up um, on any supplies you might need um, and as well as, you know, cutting boards, knives that are going to be used for FFVP. As far as administrative costs go, um, 
so less than 10% of your total funds for each school um, can go towards administrative costs. Um, and I should also say that you don't have to use any of your funds for admin costs. You can decide, you know, we're only going to um, purchase fruits and vegetables and then have, you know, charge some, some staff labor. Um, so it's it's not a requirement to use 10% of the funds. Um, it's it's optional. So um, what would be considered an administrative cost would be um, labor to order product and prepare the claim. So typically the um, food service director time can be put towards admin. Um, and then large equipment purchases such as coolers, refrigerators, carts. So anything that has been approved um, by our office. And then just a reminder to prorate if you're using in other programs um, and that you'll have to get approval before purchasing. So this is the site claim. Um, so as part of the monthly claiming process, when you complete a site claim for each of your schools, um, there's a section to report your FFVP costs. So you're going to have, or you're going to enter operating and administrative costs in each of the boxes here. Um, and then for administrative, if you purchase any large equipment, this is where you're going to enter that cost. So that's where you report your large equipment purchases. If you're buying um, small wares supplies, you're going to report that under operating other cost because anything that goes under administrative costs is subject to that 10 percent limit um and i did want to mention that we have some edit checks in cmp web so if you do go over the 10 percent admin limit you will get a, an error message and also if you exceed your allocation you'll get an error message as well um, those are usually when I get the emails or calls saying, Stephanie, how come I, I'm getting this message or I can't, you know, enter my numbers. So, but just wanted to make everyone aware that um, we do have those edit checks in place. Um, and I'm also working on an enhancement to CMP web so that on the sponsor um, screen or um, sponsor claim screen, um, it will tell you if you're reaching your limit, so it kind of gives you um, a heads up if you're close to exceeding your allocation. There's also a payments tab um, that I wanted to make you aware of um, and that you can check how much you've been paid to date for FFVP. So there is, um, so you'll see claims here and payments is on the right to the right of that. Um, so if you go down to FFVP, it breaks it down by um, batch number or when you were paid and then total payments received to date. Um, this is a district level um, report. Um, so if you have more than one school, it's not going to break down by each school. Um, it's the grand total. Um, so I think this would be most helpful if you only have one school that's in FFVP, um, because this is another way of, of seeing how much you've spent to date. But you're welcome to look at it. Um, and I know some other directors will if you have multiple schools. As far as monitoring your fund usage, um, I just wanted to make everyone aware. And for those of you who have been in the program for a while, you already know this, um, but I always conduct a mid-year evaluation of fund usage. So typically in February and March, um, once you know we're halfway through the year, um, I um, look at the usage report and sort um, 
fund usage from high to low. And um, I send out emails to schools that have spent less than 40% of their funds to date. Um, and um, in turn, that um, district will have to submit a plan to me um, if you plan on using all of your funds or um, if you only plan on using 80%, for example. Um, and so a response is given. And then um, once I hear from everyone, I will take the funds that from, from the schools that don't plan on using all of them and reallocate to others. Um, so usually I reallocate to schools that need more money. Um, another option that I've done in the past is if there is enough money, I will add a school that's from a wait list. So say if they were, they were close to um, getting awarded the program, but didn't quite make it, um, didn't make the cut, I will pull from that list. Um, so um, monitoring your funds is, uh, throughout the year is, is really important. All right, so we will end with some resources and tips. Um, so these are all on our FFVP webpage. Um, and so I would definitely um, bookmark the handbook because it um, goes through all the nuts and bolts of the program. Um, if you have a question, you usually can find the answer in the handbook. Um, so I would definitely recommend that, especially if you're um, brand new to FFVP. Um, there's also a fact sheet that's um, on the right of the screen um, that you know answers some questions about the program. Um, and might also be helpful to share um, with, you know, your administration or if, if um, you know, possibly posting on your web page. And then there's also um, a budgeting tool um, that I stole from Kansas Department of Education. So if you're looking for more resources related to budgeting and, and keeping track of, of your funds, um, I would take a look at that. So some budgeting tips. Um, so these are some tips that I've uh, kind of come across throughout the years. So um, developing a budget for each school and monitoring throughout the year. Um, communicate frequently with staff to avoid over or underspending because um, it could be um, either extreme. Conduct your own mid-year review of spending and adjust accordingly. Um, maybe put a reminder in your calendar for February or March, you know, review spending for your schools. Um, and then just track carefully to make sure you're not exceeding your allocation. And then to leave you with some ideas, um, saying that we're in a new new year, new school year, um, is to hold a kickoff event or a field day. Um, so it's a nice way to kind of kick off the program. Um, and then of course, field day would be later in the year, um, but you could tie it into physical activity. Um, involve your PTO or PTA to get teachers on board. Um, Cause I know that, um, you know, it's important to make sure that um, school staff not just food service are on board, but teachers, custodians, everyone um, who's going to be involved. Um, reach out to your distributors on products they offer for FFVP. See if they have any special menus or special um, items, like less familiar items that maybe um, you could serve for FFVP. Um, this is a tip for the fall is um, work with a local orchard to feature a different main apple each week. Um, so again, not not having your your common um, items, but, you know, trying to mix it up and, and do something different um, for the kids and would be fun to do in the fall. Um, and then lastly, uh, 
pairing exotic fruits and veggies with more common ones during the same week. So Tuesday doing star fruit, Thursday doing cucumbers, um, you know, mix up common and less common ones um, to see, see what students think. And you might be surprised what they are willing to try. So that concludes our training. Um, I am going to stop presenting and see if there's any questions. Just give me a minute while I my screen gets back to normal. <laughs> Okay, it looks like we don't have any questions. Looks like just some uh, some technical stuff at the beginning of the meeting. So with that, um, I want to say thank you for joining. And at any point, um, please reach out to me if you have any questions. Um, I'm here to help and I hope everyone has a great start to the school year and um, and best of luck. So thanks everyone.